prepared speeches are easier when you have your notes. Thank you for the standing ovation after that song. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Give yourself a standing ovation. That's... Oh my goodness. Let's do our monthly affirmation. I'll, re I'll read it once, and then we'll all do it together. It's part of our gear of worthiness. I am worthy of healthy relationships. I deserve to be surrounded by loving and supportive people, and I claim a positive environment now. Let's all say that together. I am worthy of healthy relationships. I deserve to be surrounded by loving and supportive people, and I claim a positive environment now. This year, we're focusing on our, our worthiness. And last month, our focus was on our greatest potential. And this month, as, as we just read, we are claiming a positive environment. By surrounding ourselves with loving and supportive people and healthy relationships. We also do this by filling our mind with positive thoughts. Like Artego said earlier, in the moment. In each moment, it's that positive thought that can change our world. Last week, Ed delivered a very powerful talk that reminded us not only to love the flowers, but to also love the weeds. I've recently been reading a book called Love Always Answers, Walking the Path of Miracles. It was written by Reverend Diane Burke, uh, who is the founder of One Spirit in New York City, where I attended seminary and where Ed is attending um, currently. And th this book is it's a good introduction and companion to the Course in Miracles. And chapter four is titled, Forgiveness is a Choice, Choosing What We See. And today's talk is inspired by that chapter. The other day I, I, had, um, I had picked up the book. I was in the middle of chapter three and I was struggling through chapter three. So I was like, I'm just going to finish it. So I read it, got it done. And then I looked at chapter four and I was like, ah, this one speaks to me today. But before I get into all of that, I want to read a post that I saw on Facebook by Liz Wagner. Uh, and our friend Kelly Lowe is the one that had posted it on her Facebook page. And Liz Wagner wrote, Tonight, I walked in from the store with my arms full and a, of a, and a brand new candle in my bag. As I struggled to get it all on the counter, one bag dropped and I heard the glass break. My brand new candle was ruined as the glass shattered. Frustrated, I was ready to throw the whole thing away. My husband refused to let me do so. It will still light, he said. It will still serve its purpose. Immediately, I began to argue back. But it's broken and it's ugly and glass is everywhere. It's just not the same. I walked away and I, when I came back, he had placed the candle on the counter and lit it. My heart was immediately drawn to the light. How often do we do, how often do, we do this in our own lives and, or with others? Things don't turn out the way we want them to. Plans fail, dreams shatter, goals hit the floor. People break our hearts and we're ready to hold, throw the whole dang thing away in the trash, even though it can still light, still shine, still bring the fragrance of goodness. It just may not be pretty or in the package that we wanted or imagined. Oh, I need to turn this on. Then we'll do it. There we go, there's our candle.
in the workbook for A Course in Miracles on page 470, it says, forgiveness is a choice. I never see my brother as he is, for that is beyond perception. What I see in him is merely what I wish to see, because it stands for what I want to be the truth. It is to this alone that I respond, however much I want to see seem to be impelled by outside happenings. What I see in him is merely what I wish to see. Because it's what I want to be the truth. Like Ed said last week, our perceptions of others is merely a reflection of ourselves. So in this story with Liz and the candle, she was blinded by the thought of the candle being broken. She could not see the truth that it would still be, could still be lit and enjoyed. She was upset because, as she said, it wasn't the same. Sometimes there are changes in our lives that we perceive, we may perceive it as bad because they are no longer what we want them to be. We are blinded by that thought. We're blinded by the thought that we're late. Or we're blinded by the thought of, I'm getting older. Or we're blinded by the thought of, I don't like this job anymore. We cannot see the benefit or the beauty in these changes. If nothing changes, how do we grow? How do we expand? How do we reach our greatest potential? How do we move past hurts and regret? We forgive. In Reverend Diane's book, she says, forgiveness bridges the gap between the ego self that between the ego self we believe we are and the self with a capital S that God created. As we are willing to offer forgiveness to others, to see past their illusions about themselves, to see their fear and their defenses, to see past the mask of their ego to the spark of divine light, that is the truth in them, we receive our own forgiveness as well. She says, forgiveness reveals to us that we are still the children of the divine, no matter what the ego has taught us about ourselves. A Course in Miracles, page 322, says, The bridge, forgiveness, is nothing more than a transition into the perspective of reality. So, figure ground drawings is a, a, a tool that she used to uh, explain this. So, this is a figure ground drawing. So what's the first thing you see? Okay, say it out loud. Faces. Two faces, I heard also a chalice, okay? In this figure line drawing, there are two things. Some of you saw two faces immediately. Some of you saw a chalice immediately. You are all correct. Usually when we first look at a figure ground drawing, we will only see one of the two images. Some see one thing, some see the other. So in order to see the other picture, we need to clear our mind. Clear our mind of what we're seeing. Instead of arguing, it's two faces, no, it's a chalice. Or the candle is broken, yes, and it can still light. Instead of arguing back and forth, clear your mind to be open to something different. And in that openness, we can see the second image, as if it had been revealed there all the, all the time. So if you saw two faces, first look at it, see if you see the chalice. If you saw the chalice first, look at it, see if you see the two faces. Okay, everybody see, see that? See the change? So now, when you look at it, you can't imagine not being able to see the other one. But now you have to choose which one you want to look at. 
you can decide, oh, I'm going to look at it, and I'm going to see the chalice. So you look at it, you see the chalice, the faces fade away. Or he was like, no, I want to see the faces. You look at it, you see the faces, and the chalice fades away. I had another slide just in case you didn't see the difference between the two. Just to change the colors. Because when we do that one, I see the chalice first, on it, just because it's brighter. But once we see the, both drawings, it's hard to see them at the same time. I mean, you can look at it and be like, yes, I know there's a chalice and two faces there. I kind of see them, but really the image isn't clear. Focus on, but, but we choose which one that we want to look at. Reverend Diane said, in the, cor the, in the course teaches us that we need to look upon this world much like a figure ground drawing as neutral, as lacking inherent meaning, but reflecting back to us the meaning that we want to see in it, what we want to experience as real for us. In any situation, in any person, we can see two different pictures. The picture the ego sees or the picture that the Holy Spirit sees. We can see either one. We can even see both, but perhaps not at the same time. Just like Liz in the story of the candle. At first, she saw the candle only as broken and useless. But then she was able to change that, her perception, and see the beauty of the flame. The Course says, two ways of looking at the world are in your mind and your perception will reflect the guidance you have chosen. So we're going to look at this again from uh, the story from John chapter 9 in the New Testament. So John chapter 9. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? that he was born blind. Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. So the man went and washed, and he came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, Isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, No, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How were your eyes opened, they asked. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and then I could see. Where is this man, they asked. I don't know, he said. So here's the two pictures. The disciples were seeing the man's blindness as caused by the sins of someone. Either the man himself, perhaps from a previous life. Uh, we don't often think of the, the, the Hebrews at this time of believing in incarnations and karma, but yes, they believed that sometimes the, your sins from a previous life carried over and you had to pay for them in the next one. Or... He could be blind because of the sins of his parents. But, for some, but either way, they could only see his blindness as a punishment for something. But Jesus said, this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. So that the works of God might be displayed in him. There is no sin. There is no fault. He is perfect. Jesus puts mud on the blind man's eyes and tells him to wash in the pool of Siloam. Metaphysically, 
Siloam, also known in other portions of the Bible as Shiloh, means one sent sending forth or putting away. Go wash in the pool of Siloam means to deny away the false idea. We are to deny the universal race belief in the reality and power of matter and to affirm the spirituality of all substance. It's the putting away of error and giving the attention to spirit. So this, the blind man, all of his focus is on the world. There is no focus in or on spirit. It's all on world, and he cannot see. But Christ consciousness tells him to put away that, put away that error thought, Place your thoughts on spirit and on you as a spiritual being, and then, yes, you can see the truth. When we deny or put away the error thought of ego and put our attention to spirit, we can change our perception of the world. It's a choice, just like we sang at the beginning of the, I, of the service, I'm choosing heaven today. Let's choose that every day in every moment. Let's choose joy. Let's choose love in every moment. We can see both. We get to choose what we see. Forgiveness is the bridge that can bring us the positive environment that we are claiming. So let us prepare for meditation. I've created this meditation from the end of chapter 4 from Reverend Diane's book. So go ahead, go ahead, let the seat support you, the back support you, the armrest support you, or have your arms resting on your lap. Just be comfortable. Close your eyes or lower your gaze. And just be in this moment. Breathing in through your nose, a deep breath, and hold it, and release through your mouth. Let's do that again. Breathing in deeply through your nose, holding, and release. Feeling the tension leave your shoulders and your neck. And again, breathing in deeply. And release. The idea of choice, of preference in perception, is extremely important to the understanding, the practice of forgiveness. Think for a moment about a situation or person you have not forgiven, about which you are carrying a grievance. As you bring this person or situation to mind, pay attention to how you feel. If you are honest with yourself, you are probably feeling some degree of physical or emotional discomfort, even pain. You may feel tense, angry, anxious, powerless, fearful, upset. Your stomach may be in knots. Your blood pressure may rise. Your breath may feel constricted. Your heart may pound. You may be aware of a holding on, a tightening and gripping of the mind, a hardening and armoring heart. These feelings are the price we pay for unforgiveness. The situation you are thinking about can be thought of, like everything else in this world, as a figure 
ground drawing. It can show you evidence of someone's guilt, or it can be looked at as an opportunity to become more aware of God's healing presence, power, and love. Just as when we first look at a figure ground drawing, we generally see one picture or the other. In any situation in which we are carrying a grievance, we are already focusing on and seeing the picture of guilt. Look at the picture in your mind. Ask yourself these two simple questions. Is the picture I am looking at bringing me happiness, a sense of safety, peace of mind? Do I like how I feel? The Course assures us that the picture that for a uh, that forgiveness would show us leads us to a very different experience. Keeping your eyes closed, let us practice forgiveness. We'll start by forgiving ourselves. We, give, we forgive ourselves of any blame or spiritual malpractice. We release the ego or error thoughts of ourselves. We put away the false thought and bring forth the spiritual truth of who we are. As I sing this song, may my voice be your voice. If you feel like singing with me, you are welcome to. Coming from your heart, I forgive me. I forgive me. Everything that I've been holding on to, I let go. I surrender. I surrender. I'm ready for my change. I'm ready for my change. I forgive me. 
sit in a few minutes of silence, I invite you to change the picture in your mind to one of forgiveness, love, and compassion. Taking a deep breath in, let that out. And bring your attention back into the room. I recently saw a post, it's like, what's the difference between surrender and giving up? Giving up, if you're in a pool of water, giving up, you sink to the bottom and you drown. When you surrender, you just lay back and float. From the Course in Miracles workbook, what could you want forgiveness cannot give? Do you want peace? Forgiveness, forgiveness offers it. Do you want happiness, a quiet mind, a certainty of purpose, and a sense of worth and beauty that transcends the world? Do you want care and safety and warmth of shore, of shore protection always? Do you want a quietness that cannot be disturbed, a gentleness that can never be hurt, a deep abiding comfort and a rest so perfect it can never be upset? All this, forgiveness offers you and more. One picture can bring us pain. Like a broken candle or the sins of a blind man. The other offers peace. Like the glowing light of a candle or seeing God's perfection at work in everyone. We get to choose. Does this choice bring me happiness, a sense of safety, peace of mind? Or does it bring me hurt, pain, a sense of unworthy? Which one do you choose? When you go out into the world, what do you see? Thank you.